everyone, Vegan Power Strongman here. This video is about why I'm vegan and why I'm still vegan. And I'm also gonna tie it in a little bit with what's been happening in Australia with animal rights protests and my response to that. Let's get into it, I hope you enjoy it. Going vegan has definitely changed my life. It has made my life better in so many ways as well as um, affecting the lives of others and uh, obviously having a positive impact on the environment but if you're not aware of some of these things we're going to break it down we're going to go through exactly why people go vegan does it really make a difference is it worth it and what effect has it had on me and on, on others in the time that i've been vegan as an individual let's get into it So what you can see here is a vegan calculator based on the facts from Cowspiracy and the data on Cowspiracy. I've been vegan for four years and seven months now, coming up to five years. And you can see that in terms of litres of water, I've saved almost seven million litres of water just as me as an individual being vegan. So you can see plants use far less litres of water or gallons of water. And that is because if you have to water the plants to feed to the animals and water the animals that are producing the butter or going to become a piece of animal flesh, a bit of meat, then that requires far more water. You can see here for beef, 6,443 litres versus 326 for oranges and 419 for tofu. So let's have a look at um, kilograms of CO2 saved in four years and seven months. I have saved 15,197 kilograms of CO2. So let's have a look at some data here. You can see the vegans um, emit the least CO2 emissions with vegetarians next, which is why I'm not vegetarian from an environmental perspective. Then no beef, then average, and then meat lovers. If you think this is vegan propaganda, here's a source from Oxford University from Peter Scarborough. And we can see diets high in meat um, emit uh, far, far more, more than um, double the amount of uh, the vegans. And the vegetarians are even still quite a bit above the vegans there. And again, now let's have a look at one acre of land and how much food you can produce with one acre of land. 40,000 pounds of tomatoes, 53,000 pounds of potatoes, or 137 pounds of beef. That's the land comparison. Considering there is little available arable land, farmable land in the world, you can see that farming beef here is not effective compared to potatoes and tomatoes. So you can see that not only is the environment saved, and it, not only is it far more efficient, but I've also saved thousands of animals' lives being, by being vegan. Animals like this lamb, this baby lamb which we like to eat in Australia, animals like this pig which just would otherwise become a piece of bacon animals like these cows which have gone to freedom hill sanctuary so how does this work every time you spend money you're casting a vote for the kind of world you want if you want a compassionate world you have to buy products which are inherently compassionate and supply and demand works when we increase the sales of plant-based milk they produce more plant-based milk 3.1% increase from 2016 to 17 in plant-based milk. Soy, rice, oat, almond, the choices are limitless with plant-based milks. Cow's milk went down 5% in the US, for instance, in 2016 to 17, and non-dairy alternative milk sales have gone up 250% in the past five years. And further to that, you can even see here that Elmer's Dairy, for instance, one of the largest dairy operators in the, in the East Coast in the US, stopped producing cow's milk all together in 2016 and now only sells plant-based milks that is progress that is change okay so why am i vegan for the animals why am i still vegan for the animals why does it make sense to be vegan for the animals so you've already seen that being vegan in just under five years you can save the lives of thousands of animals 
and you can reduce the demand for their slaughter for the poor treatment of animals, for the use of animals, for the exploitation of animals in a myriad of ways. So we exploit animals, we cut, um, we clip wings, we cut tails, we um, cut cows horns, we kill baby chickens, we slaughter the bobby calves that are useless to the milk industry and whenever we pay for these products we support that exploitation, that cruelty. It, it's analogous to slavery because we're using these animals as um, commodities and they don't have any um, say in what happens. Basically, they have their own interests. Animals have their own interests. So if they if they matter morally to us, we have to say that what what are the reasons that are so good that justify us slaughtering, abusing, killing, using, exploiting animals, and um, forcibly breeding them, manipulating them, and all those things. And the only answer we can really come up with is that we like the way they taste. We like to wear them we it's convenient and it's habit it's what we've always done it's our tradition and we've got to ask ourselves are they really good enough reasons so the reason I'm still vegan for the animals is that they're not good enough reasons of course they're not um, because I care I care about animals and the reality is all people if you're watching this and you're not vegan I know you, you would care about animals too and you'd be against animal cruelty and there is no humane way to take the life of an animal that doesn't want to die. So let's explore why the vegans who released some animals or saved some animals in Australia are being called terrorists. And let's look at the, 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 uh, the claim that vegans are extreme and that we are militant or violent. And let's, um, let's, let's assess that and really see if it's justified and whether we should actually eat animals or not and why I still haven't been personally eating animals why uh, other people should do the same okay so what you're looking at now is the farmed animal lifespans and you can see for instance that um, turkeys are slaughtered at the age of 8 to 26 weeks despite the fact that in the wild they live up to 10 years a cow's natural lifespan is 15 to 20 years and their slaughter age is 5 before they uh, can no longer produce milk and you can see that essentially all of these animals have shorten lifespans and the reason for that is it's not profitable to keep animals for long periods of time when you're only using them for products to make them into certain products there's no point keeping a beef um, cow al alive for a long period of time if you don't need to and if it's not profitable to so you can start to see why I'm still vegan for the animals um, so individuals are treated as property here. All of these animals have their own individual personalities. We view them as in, as uh, property, whereas humans, human animals, Homo sapiens, we view as the only animal who belongs in the moral community. So that's why I'm vegan, because that's wrong, because animals matter morally. So no violence, no, vic no victims, that's why I'm vegan. So again, you can save thousands of animals just in a uh, short four and a half year odd period. Imagine how many um, animals can be saved when millions of people go vegan because there's millions of vegans around the world. So let's have a look at this. You can't live a non-violent life as long as you're consuming violence. So again, if you're against violence, think about what you're really doing when you pay for these animal products. And again, that's why I'm vegan because it's always in the forefront of my consciousness. So isn't it illegal what vegans are doing when they're saving animals, these animal activists? Well, it may be illegal to trespass on their property and I don't necessarily recommend this as the best form of activism. But let's remember that what's legal and what is right and wrong are not always the same thing. And it's currently legal to be cruel to animals and to slaughter animals. And it's no difference to the way we gassed Jews, Nazis gassed Jew in, Jews in Germany. And if you don't really love animals or care about them that much, being vegan just means that we agree that we're not going to harm them unnecessarily or we're going to make our best effort not to support anything that harms animals unnecessarily. Doesn't mean you have to be crazy compassionate about animals. So why are vegans called extreme? Well, probably because they're challenging the ideals of society. It's not because picking a grape 
off a tree harms the grape. We know that um, killing animals harms them. At the very sorry, at the very least, this causes the loss of their life, which is very precious and makes a world of difference to them. Obviously, it's all all that they have actually is their life. Um, so, at the very least, we're doing them a great injustice. So why am I still vegan for my health? Well, because eating vegan foods, whole plant foods primarily, are very healthy. As you probably already know, eating um, processed meats and dairy causes cancer and heart disease, and eating lots of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and grains prevents it. In fact, on heart disease, heart disease reversal on a low-fat, whole food, plant-based vegan diet it's the only diet which has actually reversed heart disease, not only prevented it in patients who are near death in terms of their, the percentage of their arteries that are clogged. And it makes sense when we know that cholesterol and saturated fat are basically the causes of heart disease and that vegan foods don't have cholesterol and even nuts and seeds and high fat vegan foods are lower in saturated fat on average the meats and, da and dairy products so eating these all these healthy vegan products you're about to see here has these delicious products as well by the way it's no sacrifice has helped me achieve an LDL cholesterol 1.4 anything below 3 is extremely low risk for heart disease 1.4 which is well below 3 an LDL cholesterol 1.4 and that happens because I don't eat cholesterol there's no cholesterol in vegan products and I don't eat high amounts of saturated fat and I don't have products conducive to heart disease and you can see here my blood pressure I've got my blood pressure down to 103 over 79 despite having a predisposition for a high blood pressure in that uh, genetic history in the family um, I've also recorded a visceral fat level of 1 out of 10 that's the lowest reading you can possibly get for fat around the arteries. I haven't lost any muscle as you can see. I can still lift big heavy atlas stones. I've been doing strongman and maintaining my muscle and strength. My bone mineral density is well within the range that it should be. And I'm still building muscle and strength, still um, placing in strongman competitions or winning strongman con competitions. I'm still um, vegan for my health still vegan for my wealth, for my interior wealth, for the environment, as you can see here, the lovely environment, and for the animals.